In this video, we're going to learn about edge flow and edge control. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk more about inserting and removing edges, controlling edges, and really understanding the nuances when working in the forms environment. So to get started, we're going to create a new form, and we're going to start with a plane, and just go ahead and pick one of the planes, and create a rectangle. We're going to use an 8x8 eight eight layout, and we're going to say OK. Whenever we create a new form body, we have a really nice uniform layout of all of the different faces, edges, and vertices. And this is always going to be our goal, to have a nice, consistent layout of these edges. However, when we start manipulating them, when we start adding or removing edges, it gets to be a little bit cumbersome. So in this video, I want to talk more about ways in which we can control the specific edges, ways in which we can add and remove them, and really understand the differences and the nuances between doing something like insert edge with exact or a simple. So to get started, let's go ahead and double click on this top edge, go to edit form, and the first thing that I want to note is if we begin moving this around, we've already altered the layout. So we're going to use Control or Command Z to undo, and we want to talk about rotating. Now you can see when we rotate, what ends up happening is we get a situation where we start folding over on ourselves. Once again, we want to use Control or Command Z to undo. If we use Scale, this is a great way for us to evenly adjust the length of this edge and keep the patch very consistent. You'll note here that we are able to scale it down without having any other issues. Another thing I want to talk about is let's go ahead and double click on the bottom edge. Next, I want to use this set pivot option. Now, this is an option that typically is available when you're working in things like move copy or align, but you'll notice on the edit form tools, it's not instantly available. If we expand object snap or soft modification or selection options or even numerical inputs, we don't see this set pivot option. It's only inside of this floating dialog. So we want to use set pivot and we can pick a specific location by snapping to a point. And once we're happy, we can select done. The reason that this is important is now we can scale to or from this specific point. This is going to be important because this will give us great control over where the edge is going. We can use this to rotate, and again, you'll notice that it is rotating from this point. One thing that happens is when we rotate, we start to get into a situation where now we don't have this even layout between all these patches. I'm going to left click, I'm going to select OK, I'm going to rotate this around and note that this is still a plane. We haven't moved it around in 3D. So before we move it around, this is a great time for us to restructure this patch layout. When we do this, we can do a few different things. We can double click on an edge and select delete to remove it. Then we can go back and use things like insert edge to add it back. I'm gonna double click on this edge and note that insert edge will put it exactly halfway between both edges, even though they're at angles. We have an exact and a simple insertion method, and we can insert a single or multiple, in this case, both on either side of our selected edge. This isn't really gonna make a difference for us here because our edge is at the boundary of our form. In this case, since we are talking about a plane and we haven't moved anything in 3D, simple and exact will give us the same, in this case, the same outcome. Let's go ahead and say okay, and note that now we added that edge and it's a little bit more even in terms of its layout. Let's go back to Modify Edit Form and let's begin making some adjustments. I also do want to talk a little bit more about selection methods. We've looked at selection methods and in this case what we did is we've used things like shift and up and down to grow or shrink our selection. So you can see that here it's going to increase or decrease our selection evenly based on our first face selected. Or if we select a vertex or an edge it'll have the same effect. You can see that it grows or shrinks that. You can also use things like loop grow or shrink or ring grow or shrink. For example, if I select this edge, we can do a ring selection or a loop selection. This can make the selection process really easy. But what about using some simple tricks like double clicking an edge? If we double click an edge, it'll allow us to grab the entire loop automatically. 
Also, if we select a face and double click it, notice it grabs the whole body. But if we select one face, hold down the shift key, and then double click another face, it allows us to select all of the faces in between. This works for edges and vertices as well. For example, if I shift and double select this one, you can see that I've gotten that edge. But now let's go ahead and start to create some curvature. I'm gonna double click this edge. Again, I'm gonna reset my pivot all the way to here. I'm gonna select the green check mark for okay. And then I wanna rotate this edge out. We're gonna repeat the process by moving up a handful of edges. Again, reset our pivot. And once we are happy with its position, let's go ahead and rotate this out as well. The reason I wanna do this is because now I wanna look at this curvature. You'll notice that we moved both edges very similarly. However, we have a much tighter curve on this upper section and a much broader curve on this lower section. This is gonna be a result of the layout of these edges. So because of the adjustments that we had already made to the patch layout, you can see that the distance between these two edges is different. But one thing that we have to understand when we're talking about the form layout is that the curvature from all the surrounding faces are going to influence it. So as we rotate this around, the curvature into and out of these edges is going to affect the surrounding curvature. There are a couple different things that we can do to alleviate this problem. We can move edges around, move faces around. We can insert or remove edges as well. For example, let's go ahead and hit OK, go to a right view. We'll double click on this edge and simply hit Delete. When we do that, you can see that we've gone back to our flat plane. If we use Control or Command Z to undo, it's because the edge that we removed was the only one that we modified in this position. So if you decide that the curvature that you've created is not ideal, you can always delete that edge, and then we can go back and use tools like Modify and Insert Edge and simply replace it. But there are some special instances where we might want to use Insert Edge Exact over Simple. So let's do a quick modification. We're going to put our pivot point back, and we're just going to rotate this edge back again, just like we did before. I'm going to move that dialog out of the way. We'll say OK, and then we'll rotate this back. Now let's talk about Insert Edge and what kind of effect it has on our curvature. Let's double click the edge we just moved. And then let's go to Modify Insert Edge. We're going to be using the Both option, which will put an edge on both sides exactly in between the surrounding faces. And we're going to use the Simple Insertion Mode. When I do this, I want to rotate around so I can see the curvature here. Once I say OK, notice that the curvature changed. The reason it changed is because the simple insertion mode is not going to maintain the current shape of our design. Let's repeat the process on this upper curve. We're going to go to Modify Insert Edge again, but this time we're going to use Exact. When we go to the Exact mode and we take a look at the results, the curvature or the shape of our design has not changed. And that's because when we're looking at this design, we're looking at it in smooth display mode. In box display mode, however, the position or the distance of these edges are going to be different. So you'll note that they do tend to move a little bit when we go between smooth and box display. And it's important to understand that those positions in either box or smooth display mode are going to affect the surrounding curvature. Let's go ahead and repeat this process by inserting some edges up top. First, I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna select insert edge, but this time I wanna use single. I'm going to place it exactly in the middle, which is going to put it up here, and I'm going to say exact and OK. When I say exact and OK, it's not going to have any effect on the shape. It's just going to add a second level of control. Let's repeat this process. This time we're going to select both and simple. When we say OK, the curvature changes. You can see that it increased the edge weighting on that backside, giving us a tighter crease. Now that we've inserted those edges, again, we can always go back, select, and delete surrounding edges if we want to modify the curvature. So this is a great way for us to use this to our advantage by adding and removing these edges whenever we need to manipulate the geometry. Another thing that we should talk about is the use of bevel for inserting edges. In this case, let's go ahead and double click on this edge here, go to modify, and select bevel edge. Bevel Edge will add segments to either side, and it'll be based on our bevel location. If I select two, for example, and OK, 
Notice that we now have three total edges. It kept the original and then added an edge to each side. So this is a great way for us, again, to use these insertion methods to modify the curvature. Let's go ahead and undo, and then let's redo that to take a look at the change. One thing to note about using bevel is there's no simple or exact insertion mode. By using bevel, it's automatically going to be a simple insertion mode because it's going to have to adjust the curvature. Another thing that we do want to talk about when we're considering inserting edges is the use of insert point. When we go to modify and select insert point, we do have the simple and exact insertion mode. When we use this method, typically it's a good idea for us to try to find that midpoint unless we have a very specific reason or position that we want to insert that edge. I'm going to go ahead and use it on the left hand side where we have a lot of curvature. I can just move around and find those midpoints and this will allow me to create an inserted edge at a specific location. Now you might be wondering, why would we do this as opposed to using insert edge if we're putting it right in the middle? Well, that's a great question and there's really not a good reason. The only reason you would really use insert point is if you're going to stop partially on an edge or begin to manipulate the location of these points as we move down the design. Once we're happy with the insertion, we can say OK, or we can cancel out of the operation. You'll notice in this case that it didn't take going all the way through the design. Let's go ahead and double click that and hit delete. Go to modify and let's try insert point one more time. This time we're going to select the midpoint at the top and the midpoint at the bottom and say OK. Notice once again that it's not able to completely create that edge. Let's double click it one more time and delete. Go to Insert Edge, and let's try using Insert Edge in the same exact manner. We'll use the exact insertion mode, and you can see here now that we've added those additional controls. Let's try one more time using Modify and Insert Point. This time we're going to use this Simple Insertion Mode. Simple Insertion Mode is a little bit easier for it to calculate, and we're going to go ahead and just pick a couple points as we go down and hit Enter to accept. One of the things that we should note about this is that this is not a consistent or even line. If we want to change the curvature as we go down this design, we can certainly use this to our advantage, but in this case, it's probably not going to be a good result. Which brings me to my next point, the level of control that you actually need on a design. When we're talking about the level of control to get a shape like this, we need those extra control edges running in this direction along the y-axis. However, we have way more control than we need in this direction. So one thing that we can do is begin removing edges that we don't need. And once again, we can do this by selecting them and simply hitting delete on the keyboard. As we do this, make sure that we're keeping an appropriate level of control for the design. So in this case, we're able to keep the same shape, but we removed over half of the edges. We can probably even get rid of more and later on, we might decide that we want to add that control back in if we need to alter the design in the middle. But now we've got a starting and an ending edge, and we've got these internal edges to help us control the shape. If we want to add an additional edge, we can use insert edge. We can use the single insertion mode. And in this case, I want to put it at minus 0.5. I'm going to say OK. And you'll notice that the graphical preview puts it in the correct orientation. This is an issue that's come up recently in Fusion 360. When you use Insert Edge and you go past the values into the negative range, the preview doesn't show properly. But if you trust the numbers, it'll put it right in the middle. So once again, this is a great way for us to work on our skills for inserting and removing edges by simply playing around with a shape. Whenever we're playing around with these shapes, I always like to go back and forth between showing and hiding my edges, and it's also a good idea to go into inspect and take a look at things like curvature map analysis, the draft analysis, and zebra stripes. If you're designing a product that has to have draft, sometimes it's a good idea to figure out if you actually have an applicable draft amount on your design. In this case, zebra analysis is probably going to be the best choice for us. Inserting or reducing the number of repeats and inserting or changing the direction is going to help us identify the curvature that we have. We can lock the stripes position, which means that as we rotate, they'll stay where they are. And we can also dictate whether or not we have high quality. In this case, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the curvature is nice and smooth and we don't have any bumps or jogs. 
You can see here on the end that we have these little jagged sections. If I say OK, bring back my edges, double click this edge, go to Modify, and hold down the Alt key and extrude this edge. This is going to add an extra level of control, and you'll notice that it does tend to smooth these out a little bit. Sometimes the curvature ending at a hard edge is not going to be a good result, so keep in mind that these the zebra stripes on the inside are a little bit smoother than they are on the outside, and that's partially because of the control that we have here. With that edge still selected, I'm going to go back into Modify, and I'm simply going to pull it in another direction. Then I'm going to hold down Alt and extrude it again. We'll say OK, and notice that the zebra stripes update, and this gives us a good indication of the curvature. We can see here that we've got this small jog. As we rotate this around, what we're looking for is a smooth transition between those curves. It's a good idea to view it from a lot of different angles to make sure that we don't potentially have a problem. It looks to me like there is a potential problem in this area where this patch goes over, and we can hide the zebra stripes and take a look at the surface. It looks pretty good in this view, but for the most part, the zebra stripe analysis will be a great way for you to help identify any potential problems. Always remember too that we do have the utilities to help repair the body if we do find any problems. In this case, there are no problems with this body, so it's good to go. I strongly urge you to continue to play around with these organic shapes without any real direction. Just simply begin moving them around, rotating, and understanding how you can play around with inserting and removing edges. Doing this on a project that is not trying to match any shape that we already have can be an experience that will help you understand how these tools work. And also, it's just fun to play around and see what you can create. From here, make sure that you do save your work if you want to come back and play around with it, and make sure that you ask any questions that you have in the comments below. Once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.